Hello everyone, welcome to Digital Health News. We are here at uh, NASCOM LHIF and today we have with us uh, Mr. Bala Subramanian, President and CEO of uh, Thrive Digital Health LLP. Thank you so much Bala, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, you had a presentation on uh, a healthier and happier world uh, that is driven by AI tech and person-centric healthcare. Uh, when we talk about a person-centric healthcare, what exactly do you mean by that and how can artificial intelligence help into this? Uh, first of all, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be part of uh, these kind of events where innovation, both technology and clinical, is brought to bear by uh, our partners like the NASCOM Center of Excellence for IoT and Healthcare. I think the theme of this event is AI for care. So when you look at uh, care and the tagline that you just mentioned of moving towards a healthier and happier world, uh, they're very, very aligned. How do I produce treatment regimes ahead of the curve that are more accurate, that are cheaper, so the cost uh, impact on the consumer, the patient, is much lesser? How do I preempt a lot of disease manifestations? So when you look at, if I have uh, a heads up that, hey, I am at a potential risk for a particular condition, I would then take care of myself a little better uh, when it comes to manifestation of that condition. Uh, so it's almost like saying, okay, you know, you today have prescriptions for, you know, CT scans or MRIs. Uh, I would say in the future, in the next few years, you would have prescriptions for genetic profiles, uh, you know, like the genome patris of the world saying, go get your genetic profile work done so that you know what you're susceptible to and what you need to be careful of. You could potentially get prescribed for wellness changes and lifestyle changes that you need to take care of. So it's a very interesting paradigm wherein it's not just a technology issue, uh, it's, a, it's a fundamental human change management issue, it's a data issue. Uh, you know, everybody keeps talking about data is the new oil. Uh, like oil, data is useless if it is not refined. And refining data takes a lot of, uh, you know, effort and money. So AI can fundamentally help us transform healthcare as it is today. You know, that's the bottom line. Uh, whether it is development of cures, delivery of care proactively and in locations that are closer to you than you going to a clinician or a hospital. And making sure that it is very personalized in nature, uh, you know, whether it is the health insurance package that you will get or the care that you will get from the hospitals. So um, it is the holy grail, the personalized cure and cover and care that you're going to get. No, I think you're absolutely right, Bala, when you talk about uh, personalized care. Uh, we had an uh, entire uh, healthcare model where people used to go to the hospital uh, whenever they had developed some kind of disease or they are not feeling well. Now, more and more, the industry is shifting towards a personalized care where uh, they are taking, uh, uh, you know, sort of a predictive action before even the diseases begin. Uh, and that is something where uh, we are looking forward to for artificial intelligence to come in. Uh, one more question I wanted to ask in that particular area. When you talk about remote care, how will artificial intelligence uh, be helpful for remote care? Uh, it is huge. So there are many, many care deserts, as we call them, wherein either the population in question, the city, the town, the village, does not have a clinician at all, or has rudimentary clinicians uh, or, or clinical facilities, where you know, access to a doctor, uh, even if it is remote through telemedicine, or video medicine, it's immense. And today, when you look at the nation building efforts that are going on, the connectivity that has been established from panchayat to panchayat, to village to village, that is gonna help further, you know, the cause of telemedicine, access to uh, better, more experienced clinicians at the right time, uh, so that the right intervention can save many more lives. But the challenge also is that when you look at AI, uh, you know, connectivity, bandwidth issues, these are all practical difficulties that will come. And AI could potentially look at a radiology uh, report that is coming in from remote through yes. uh, a 5G connection or a 4G connection 
uh, and potentially be more accurate than a clinician, a human clinician. Uh, or at least it could come up with one or two things that the human clinicians may have missed. So there are always these checks and balances and that's why these are augmented intelligences. They help augment your decision-making capability. And you know, down the road, you could essentially eliminate radiologists. Again, this may be a too drastic uh, a thought for us to have, but already there are people in the US that are saying, you know, my AI engine is more accurate at radiology screening and detection of issues uh, or abnormalities than human radiologists. So, and it's only going to get better. You know, the more it learns, it's only going to get better. So, do we need radiologists at all? Uh, is, a, is a difficult question for us to answer. But the future of healthcare is going to change immensely through access, equity of access as well. So, anyone, anywhere can access the top notch. Uh, medical expertise, if not in person, through a doctor bot, you know, that will be available to support them. Absolutely. Uh, well, I think the, that was a very bold statement you made about, uh, you know, radiologist uh, being no longer required uh, if the AI is so precise. But as of now, the situation is uh, that there are radiologists and they need help. Uh, the change management, however, becomes a major, major issue uh, whenever they want to adopt a new technology. Uh, you are on the other side of the spectrum. The clinicians are on the uh, opposite side of the spectrum. How do you look at it from your point of view? Uh, so when it comes to AI, it's a, it's a very interesting area. You have very, very polar opinions, right? There are some who are dooms, doomsday sayers saying, you know, you're going to be run over by the Terminator like bots. There are others who say, I'm going to save humanity through AI. And I think the answer is somewhere in between. So... Uh, uh, you know, when, when it comes to uh, any technology, I would say, the adoption uh, needs a lot of guardrails to be put in place. When you look at uh, the AI models that are coming up, they learn from the data that exists today. Mm. We know very clearly that the data that exists today has a lot of bias in that data. So if I let loose an AI engine that has learned from a data with bias, mm. its recommendations are also going to carry that bias forward. Like for example, atorvastatin, uh, which is Lipitor, which is a huge blockbuster drug uh, from, from a large pharmaceutical company. It works better on Caucasian uh, men than women. Mm. It works better on Caucasians than on African Americans. And that is the inherent data that is there you know, uh, and that's the bias that exists today. So if somebody learns from that, uh, then that bias is going to take it, uh, you know, be taken forward. That's going to cause some issues. So I think we've got to be careful. We will not uh, allow AI models to take decisions. It will provide decision support. It will provide next best action or intervention recommendations. And the clinician will be the person who decides. Because like we spoke, there is always a paternalism in medicine that we have to respect. In God we trust, in doctors we trust. And that's been built over centuries. Uh, suddenly we cannot say, in two years time, I'm going to extend that to, in the AI model that helps the doctor with the diagnosis, we trust. Uh, that will take some time. Absolutely. One last question, Bala. Uh, what are the products and solutions that you are working at at uh, Thrive uh, Digital Health uh, that include artificial intelligence and that are sort of futuristic? We've been fortunate to get a ringside uh, seat at this uh, reimagining healthcare journey. Um, as a parent enterprise that is both uh, having a payer in the house and the provider in the house, which essentially means the health insurance side of the business and the hospital side of the business, we are deeply entrenched in multiple initiatives involving AI uh, and helping them transform. Uh, it could be simple things on the technology side that are easier to start with. Like for example, using a gen AI model to help you code uh, or generate code. Using a gen AI model to generate test scenarios or test cases. Uh, you know, there are many technology uh, use cases that are relatively easier because they are not directly clinical or care related or patient related. 
Uh, and so the guardrails are much looser here. It will be much tighter there. Uh, but as you progress, we spoke about paper elimination being a big, big thing for all companies, especially healthcare companies. Uh, we receive more than a million and a half uh, claims every year on paper and we have to process them. There's a lot of manual effort and inefficiency involved. So using an AI engine to learn, uh, you know, how to take information that's on a paper uh, with scribbled information, doctor's handwritings or yes. nurse's handwriting, strict, you know, struck out information, uh, written information written vertically, horizontally in blue, red, green, uh, ink, uh, and typed and faxed which essentially means you have blurry images and blurry sections of uh, images. Uh, and the AI model helps us identify all of that and seamlessly straight through process that. You know, that is a huge sale. So it, it ranges from technical use cases through to operational efficiency use cases like paper elimination, for example, through to medical and clinical use cases wherein we are using AI to actually generate recommendations around the next best action for my patient. When my patient is in front of a physician saying, I need care, the physician not only has uh, a multitude of data in front of him as part of the systems, whether it is hospital information, laboratory systems, uh, histopathological systems, you've got the electronic medical records, past history, but the AI engine can help the doctor uh, by supporting him or her go through the probably the 10,000, 100,000 data points that are in front of him or her, uh, and which is humanly tough, right? Absolutely. To make a recommendation that is the next best action for the patient in question. So we work on uh, a range of these proof of concepts, proof of technologies, pilots, we work with startups as well. So it's exciting times for those in the healthcare segment. And I'm very grateful and thankful uh, that I personally and Thrive as an organization is bang in the middle of this transformation. That sounds absolutely interesting. Thank you so much, Bala. Thank you so much for this conversation. I appreciate it. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.